Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. Today we're going to have a look at some of the equipment you're going to need if you're thinking of installing solar panels and battery storage. Now I am going to go into more detail in another video around MCS registration and all of the things we need to be doing in terms of our qualifications, paperwork, quality management systems and all of the rest of that good stuff. But in this one we're going to focus on the site equipment and tools you're going to need if you're thinking of getting into the solar industry. We've learned quite a bit along the way already with this. I'm hoping this content will be useful to you guys and girls who may be following along on our journey or already further advanced in your own and perhaps take a bit of value in some of what we've got to share here today. Most of the equipment you're going to already have, lots of the power tools and hand tools. If you're a working electrician, you're going to have most of this stuff already, but there are some bespoke and new bits of equipment specifically around crimping and testing that you're maybe not going to have in your kit as the solar PV installers will have. So I wanted to speak a bit about those. We'll go through it from start to finish. First up is the PPE. Obviously when you're working at height there is extra considerations around all of that. So you may need for example harnessing and lanyards even to the point of lifting equipment up and down off the scaffold. So taking your tools up and down you shouldn't really be carrying them up the ladders. You need a system in place to lift them up. So we've come up with some winch and pulley mounts using ropes to get our tools and gear up there with the soft shell buckets. They're not expensive, they're four or five quid off Amazon. You can get plenty in them and then up you go with all of the gear in place. You're also gonna need good sets of gloves. So for those of you who are already familiar with site-based work, you have to wear your gloves anyway. If you come in more from a domestic background and you're just putting your gloves on to do specific tasks like chasing, most of what you're using for that is going to be suitable and just fine. Same for your eye protection and ear defenders. All the basics still apply. There is a set of PP that's going to come in super useful. Really, you should be trying to avoid working on your knees, but when you are up on a roofing system, it is by nature heavy on the knees. You are going to be knelt down quite a bit of time. I've tried to do it in a way myself to avoid it. I know Matthew and Nathan have been doing the same, but it is really difficult when you're working around the rails, you're on that pitch, the natural instinct is just to kneel down. And I've got these ones from Klein Tools. So these are the padded and rugged version. They've got the support on the back there that give you that extra comfort and also they're not sliding up and down when you are on and off roofs and moving around, you know, these things want to be nice and secure and also not too irritating when you're wearing them for the whole day. And I found these tick that box really well. So they're from Klein Tools. We'll demonstrate them out on site with the guys wearing them. We've also got some of the Klein Tools um, pull up knee pads. We'll demonstrate those out on site as well. They're basically like a sock of a knee pad built in, the best way to describe them. So you pull them up and over your knee. They do tend to stay in place. You can wear them over trousers or direct on your skin if you're wearing shorts. So we'll cover those as well. The tools themselves, very basic set with your solar install gear. So you're gonna need croppers for cutting the um, solar strings, all of your basic normal electrical stuff for mounting your inverters and battery storage. I'm not gonna teach people to suck eggs with stuff like that. So your basic SDSs and such. Um, there are some bits of gear that you're gonna be using more than others. One of which is angle grinders. So I've got my little cut off saw here from Milwaukee that doubles up as a bit of a grinder. So cutting out the back of tiles, this is really useful because it's got a depth gauge on it. Um, it's on one of the other ones we've got of these at present out on site, so I can't demonstrate that for you. But you can set a depth when you're going over the back of a tile and you just wanna cut a consistent, even groove to go over the top of the roof hook. They're absolutely ideal because it enables you to do that and have confidence that all the way across the tile you go into the same depth and then you scoop the back out. We've also got the bigger grinders, so the 18 volt range, so if you're working off the proper concrete tiles rather than some of the soft clear brick based tiles, then you're gonna need that bigger blade. There's a lot more material to cut into and remove that's harder. So you're gonna need that more powerful angle grinder. So it's using it in a slightly different way to what we otherwise be used to. Typically we're using angle grinders for metal containment, occasionally when we're chasing out brick and block work. But this is a really handy way of creating those little grooves in the back of tiles so you can maintain the weather seal of the roof without having to use any kind of flashing or patching. 
Obviously that doesn't work on lead based roofs and slate based roofs, but you have got that there if you're working on the concrete tile systems. So we've got that. There is another power tool that we will generally have available to us electricians, but maybe not using it commonly every day, and that is band saws. So I've got a couple of options down here that will show you. So we've got the old trusted Bosch 18 volt bandsaw. I've had this for absolutely years. It has been through the ringer, I've got to say, but it holds up strong every time. It'll cut most of the strut um, and containment very, very easily. And that was one of the first pots of call I went to when we started cutting aluminium rail for the solar panel mountings. So when you're putting your rail on the roof, you generally leave it a bit long and then you'll put your panels on and at the very end, cut them off so they're nice and um, not protruding too far out the edge of your array basically. So there's that one. And we've also recently invested in some of the Milwaukee M12 variants. We've got the fuel version here because it's got a wider and deeper cutting capacity than just the standard M12 band saw. So you need to be careful when you're choosing these from Milwaukee. They do have, I think they call it the subcompact one. Doesn't quite fit the aluminium rail in for solar panels. So be mindful of that. And the Milwaukee one, I think it's 760 mil ish or maybe 730 mil. I'm not maybe getting that quite right. But be careful you're choosing the right length of blade for your bandsaw as well. So we've got those. Another tool that is very, very useful is the Milwaukee M12 ratchet um, driver. So this is a quarter inch variant, but we've got the half inch adapter on there. So when you're fastening up your fixings for the rails mounting onto the brackets, these are really handy. I know the Fastenal system uses the 10 mil, I think it is. Um, and these are a great way of being able to fasten them in because you can nip them up and then go in the last few touches by hand to give yourself a feel and then use a torque wrench to make those final adjustments. I have been considering buying the Milwaukee M12 digital torque wrench for this purpose, but it's a bit big and cumbersome and I think the torque range is beyond what you would be using um, up on a roofing system anyway. So for the minute, I've held off buying that, but there's that. And then there's the basics up on the roof for when you're fixing the brackets into the rafters and such, you're gonna need your combi drills. So I've got a couple of examples here. Again, most of our gear is out on site being used, but we've got the Bosch 18 volt basic combi here and the DeWalt variant there as well. The um, tools that we tend to use out on site are the M18, Milwaukee combis, pound for pound, they are the most talky and powerful in my opinion. I think that the FD2 or something is the coding on it. It's a second generation. I think there's a new third generation just out. I've not tried the M12 variant as yet. I don't think it'll have quite the guts for driving some of these big fixings in on the roof hooks. They are quite large, six and eight mil roof, uh, sorry, wood screws. So you're gonna need something with a bit of power. We have also got the impact drivers. And again, that's for doing the fixings into the rafters if you're finding the combi drills not quite cutting it. If it's particularly hard timber, these come into their own. I would avoid using impact drivers on the fixings for the um, rail and fastening down the panels onto the rails as well. Just because they put a bit of stress on those components, you don't want to be damaging them or stretching the bolts at the point of installation. So I think it's always better to either use a combi with the torque setting engaged or something like this where you've got a bit more manual control so you know you're setting that right. As you know with your combis, or if you don't, you've got little torque dials on there so you can set an approximate value of torque and then you know you're not going to overgun it or damage any of the fixings because that's one of the primary concerns when we're fitting those systems onto the roof. I have also got the Tool Check Plus. So this has got an array of... Um, your socket sets on there and also the torque bits and posi bits it's really handy the mounting systems do all vary so the fastener gear where we've been working with i think it's 10 mil for most of the um, bolts fixings and a t40 bit i think on fastening the clamps down on the rails so to hold the panels on but having a full set in there that will go on the various bits of kit so you've got the adapters to use an impact driver on that you've also got the adapters to use with your um, ratchet and you're going to be covering all bases. There is a real basic set of hand tools you're going to need as well, such as tape measures, spirit levels. Obviously those kind of things are really helpful when you're up on a roof face because it's difficult to eye anything in up there when you're so close up to the material you're working on. 
Sometimes what is true and level doesn't look right from the ground either. So do bear that in mind and step back and have a look before you start mounting everything up true and square. Because we've found certainly on a couple of the roofs we've worked on that true and square from the ground doesn't look quite right with the existing structure of roofs and chimneys. And sometimes going slightly off what is um, spot on yourselves looks better aesthetically from, from down below. And that's ultimately what the customer is going to want to see. So keep that in your mind too. Um, a good tip I was given by all of the solar installers I've spoken to is this kid's chalk. You see that there, that one's nearly worn out now and away to nothing. But Stuart Cato and Dan both um, put me on to using that. And it's a great tip because a lot of what you're doing involves marking out upon the roof. And obviously you can't be using marker pens and pencil lines that maybe aren't gonna rub and wash off very easily. So using the chalk, it's a great way to mark your fixing points out for where the roof hooks are gonna go. Also where the center of the roof is and the edge of your array so you can lay out in your mind in front of you. It's all well and good using software, but setting it out with some chalk I found really helpful and that was a fantastic tip. Um, another tool which is coming into its own and again, we'll all have been using these most recently with DBs and consumer units in particular and that's your feral crimping tool. This is for the DC cabling at the battery storage and inverter ends where you're running into your isolators. Obviously they're stranded cables so fine stranded and one of these comes in um, I've tried the cheaper Amazon variants and to be honest they don't last very long and I'm not over convinced about the quality of crimp they produce so I've got the Wea set for those of you who've followed on the channel before I think it was around 100 quid or so but it's money well spent because it gives a reliable and trustworthy crimp and I've used that hundreds maybe thousands of times now and it's still as good as the first time I used it, whereas some of the cheaper Amazon sets seem to lose their ability to crimp in a solid manner as time moves on with using them. So when DC and some of the high voltages and currents that are going on within that is involved, it makes sense to ensure that your um, feral crimp is up to the job, basically. And again, we've demonstrated that on the videos I've shared already. So that's another one um, to keep in mind. Now obviously there is a whole new range of testing because we're getting into the world of, of DC and AC. So we've still got our um, normal principle testing we would do with the typical MFT. So you'll see me using the MFT Pro Plus to do all of the R1, R2s, your insulation resistance testing, and your ZS testing and RCD testing as we would with a typical AC final circuit. And when it comes to measuring and testing on the strings themselves, obviously as soon as sunlight's hitting the panel, they're essentially live, so you need a special piece of equipment to be able to do your insulation resistance testing on the DC side of the system. And we've got that here, so it's the PV Isotest from TIS. And um, I've shown this on the channel a few times already, so I'm not going to go into how this specifically works. There is another piece of testing equipment on the way from TIS at the minute. I think it's their multifunction tester for PV systems, so once that turns up, we'll run through that as well. But this allows you to test voltage, insulation resistance, and even do some fault checking as well. Um, we've also got the, the clamp meter and multimeter. And again, this is uh, able to measure up to 1,000 volts DC. So on some of your strings, you can get up to those kind of voltages. In most domestic environments, chances are you're going to be around 400 or 500 volts as a maximum. But if you get in some of the bigger ground mount systems or commercial installs, you can definitely have strings up to 1,000 volts. So these are very, very handy. And also to see if there's any current flowing in the DC components before you're disconnecting any MC4 leads, even with the DC isolators in the off position, they have been known to fail and lock on. So it's well worth having something like this so you can see what's actually going on inside a system before you're disconnecting conductors. So obviously you can put yourself at danger of arc flash and other things along those lines. Um, and having all of these features in here, so this one will do your um, current measurements, voltage measurements, and it can do resistance as well and continuity. It'll even show you the frequency that the, the current's traveling within the circuit. So it's really useful, and that's the TIS um, PV, I think it's a PV200 kit they do. There's also an iridience meter. I don't know if I've got that to hand here, so I may have to scoot off and get it. So I was wanting to show you the Iridian's meter that you're going to need as well, but unfortunately it's out on site with the guys, so I can't show you that. But you're going to need a way to measure the lux level as well. So make sure you're getting yourself one of those. 
it's just a way to see the volume of sunlight within the area the panel's going to be mounted. So if you've got potential issues with shading or when you're doing your surveys and you want to be able to give a customer some reliable proposal information, getting those Iridian's values is fantastic and it also helps you with fault finding as well. Another thing you're going to need, if you haven't got it, is the code of practice. So this is now the second generation. I think they're in the process of probably writing another one. The IET are pretty good at that. So as soon as they've released the book, they get on with making a new one. Sell us a couple of years, if you're lucky, down the line. So you're going to need one of those as well. There is also various issues around um, your MCS. So you're going to need to take certain qualifications to do with solar PV battery storage. You're also going to need to be running a quality management system where you're looking after all of your customers' data and information and join um, a scheme that helps protect the consumer as well. So there's, I think it's Heiss and Rec, which you need to be joining too. We're going to go into all of that on another video in specific. I'll share my own journey through the training courses I've been on. So I took mine with Napit Training. The short story is it was absolutely fantastic, but I've got a special bit of content coming around all of that and going through the process of completing those courses applying to be MCS registered and then the MCS assessment itself and all of the bits of stuff you need to be able to tick that box off and set yourselves up as a proper solar PV and battery storage installer. All of the good stuff to do with insurance and everything else, we'll get to that in the next video so I will cover it but just for now I thought we'd run through the tools, there's probably some bits and pieces I've missed off along the way. Obviously I'm not going into all of the basics such as your hand tools to do with screwdrivers and your SDS drills for fixing stuff on the wall. It's just some of the things that you maybe not thought of that are going to be really helpful for when you are up on the roof space. We've also got a winching system actually that I want to share some content on. It's something that we've made ourselves. There are specific ladder winches for getting solar panels up onto the roof. I know some installers will carry them up on the backs on the steps. We're not getting involved in any of that. Everything we take up there is going up via a machine lift in it. Um, you can get some of the manual hand powered winches but this is a 12 volt electronic winch and we mount it at the base of the scaffold and then lift the panels in um, a solar panel bag onto the roof structure itself. But we'll cover that in some content. There is a bit of cost to that. Um, it just maintains safety. So if there is an issue with the panel going up onto the roof, it's in a bag, so if it smashes, all the glass just ends up in there rather than on the floor or on the operators. And using the winch, there's an element of safety there as well so that things shouldn't really be falling down or getting dropped and nobody's at any risk in the process of getting it up onto the scaffolding system itself. But that's always the ropiest area for me is getting those panels up onto the roof. It's something that you know we're not really used to as electricians in terms of moving something so big and bulky up two stories without anybody holding on to either end of it. So there's a bit of a learning journey for us and using rope systems and safe working practices and we'll cover that on another video soon as well. Just trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention on this one. I don't think so. If you've got any questions in specific around some of the tools and equipment you might need, please do drop them in below. I hope that's answered some of the questions some of you have popped up with. Basics are most of the kit you're going to have. Things to think about in addition would be stuff like bandsaws if you're not already using that on your containment angle grinders with appropriate masonry cutting blades and then obviously getting used to working with some of the different fixing systems so your, your socket wrenches and such rather than just blasting everything with an impact driver. Hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions or comments drop them in below. If you've enjoyed this video please do subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference to it growing and I'm hopeful that it's going to continue to do so in the coming weeks and months. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.